Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much. Welcome to worship. We welcome all who are here today, our guests and visitors. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. Uh, it is an honor to have you here, and we are very honored to share our Lord Jesus Christ with you because he is here today. He is here to bring himself in the word, in the sacrament. He will bring himself to you today uh, in the words of forgiveness and absolution, in the sermon which Pastor Joe will bring to us, in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Christ is here. He's the prime mover and the prime participant in our worship. We're glad you're here. We're also glad uh, our members are here. Welcome, welcome back from all the places this week took you, and we pray that this time together will get you started and blessed for the week ahead. It's time to worship. Let's rise. We worship in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. As I said before, we have joined back together, and we come from all the places we've been, but we all come with one condition. We all come as sinners, and the ground is level at the foot of the cross, friends. The ground is level. So together, let's come into God's presence and seek His promised forgiveness. Lord, seized by Your powerful promise of forgiveness, we come before You once more. Claiming the renewed hearts and lives Jesus Christ has won for us. We pray together. Lord of light and life, we come seeking your gracious forgiveness for the dark sins that plague us. We are called to be lights in the world, yet we find ourselves stumbling in the darkness we have made for ourselves. We grab at things that cannot satisfy, wander off into selfish ways, and do the very sins we have promised to avoid. Forgive us, Lord. Give us again the light of your patient and persistent love in Jesus Christ. Bless to see his bright way, to follow him, and to be those who are privileged to share the light of his salvation with all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. And friends, our Lord Jesus himself has promised that the sins we forgive on earth will also be forgiven in heaven. And trusting that precious promise, I confidently declare to you that in our Lord Jesus Christ, all, all of your sins are forgiven 
And you are privileged to share that same forgiveness with all the others in your life. We are filled with Jesus' light of life so that we can shine among the people of this world like stars in the sky. Amen. Let's pray. Living God, in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Tom. All right. All the children are invited to come forward or parents, anybody who really wants to come up, we'd love to have you. You win first. Good job. Oh, let's sit on the steps. Be great. Lots of kids. All right. We had one taker of an adult to come up. Nice job. All right. All right. Welcome. I uh, today we're going to talk about two different words, and and then we're going to uh, have a little bit of fun with that. Okay. So first off, can you hold this for me? Great. All right. So, who knows what the word future means? What does the word future mean? Yes. So the future is something that happens later. Okay. So it could be five minutes from now. It could be a day from now. It could be a year from now. Right. Okay. Tomorrow will be the future. Great example. Sometimes when we talk about the future, it's something in the distance, a far way away. Okay? Yeah. The present is right now. Presently, you are sitting in the front of the church listening to me. Presently, in the present, you are at church. Presently, it is kind of snowy outside. Okay? In the future, it will be sunny. In the way future, it will hopefully be warm. Right? Okay, so to demonstrate this, I'm going to need a couple volunteers, okay? Yeah, why don't you come on up? Okay, come here. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have you look this way, okay? Look only this way, okay? Ready? I want you to tell me what color are the bars that are up on the screen up there? Black. Black, okay. Um, how many exit signs are there? Yep, yep, okay. There's one way over here that I won't even let you look at because I'm like holding your head, right? Okay. Now, um, this is stuff that's way in the distance, okay? Way in the distance. Uh, what color is, uh, is the baptismal font back there? Uh, brownish. Brownish, yeah. What color is my sweater? I don't know. Yeah, you don't know, right? But you were just looking at... <gasps> what? It's kind of a trick color. There's some heathered gray and some blue, I know. So you can sit down, right? Okay, she was looking way in the distance, but she kind of forgot about the thing that was like right there, right? You had been staring at me for like the last three minutes and, you know. Okay, one more, one more. Louis, can you come help me? Yeah. Okay, can I borrow these? Okay, Louis, same thing, but I made you special binoculars, okay? I need you to hold them up to your eyes like this, okay? Okay, like that? All right, good. Now. I want you to find your parents. Can you see your parents with them? Uh, can, yeah, can you see the TV screen that's in the back? In the back, in the back this way. Can you see those? Yeah. Can you see the tickles that are coming? No. No. All right. Louie, you were so focused on the stuff way over there, you didn't see the tickles coming, did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what pastor is going to be talking about today. He's going to be talking about the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are these set of things that are, blessed are you who does this. Woe to you who does that. Blessed are you who looks to do this. And woe to you who does that. It's talking about things that, that are happening in the future, but also what pastor wants us to realize is it's also about things that we're doing and thinking and believing right now. So while we as Christians are looking forward to heaven, to spending eternity with Jesus, we should also be thinking about how we live as Christians now. 
in the present. Our belief in Jesus is what gets us to heaven. And because he died on the cross, because of the great things he does for us, we should also be thinking about how we, how we live as Christians now. Blessed are we who help each other in times of need, who give food to the needy and the poor. All right? Future, present, beatitudes. Pastor's gonna be talking about it pretty soon. Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us to church here right now. to be able to worship you right now. And thank you for our future hope of heaven with you. Amen. You guys can have a seat. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought for it does not cease to bear fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus came down from the mountain with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out of him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. You, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as you're moving forward in your life, I've got to ask you, what are you looking forward to lately? Maybe it's a spring break vacation that you're looking forward to. Maybe it's the snow melting away. I mean, understandably so, right? Or maybe you're looking for a new job opportunity or looking forward to a new promotion, something along those lines. Lots of different things to look forward to, right? But you know what's interesting about the things we look forward to? Is they don't last, do they? I mean, you think about the vacations. Yes, we go and we have a good time, but we got to come back, right? We got to go back to work. We got to go back to school. We got to go back to our, our regular routine so it doesn't just last forever and ever. Or even when it comes to the snow, and I hate to say this here today, it will melt, but then it will also come back. Please don't leave, okay? (laughs) I promise it gets better from here, okay? (laughs) Or even with your jobs, right? There may be always another opportunity or another promotion that comes down the line. They just don't seem to last. That is, except for one. And that's the one that Jesus is trying to pull out for our gospel text for today from Luke chapter 6, that there is one thing that we can look forward to that lasts forever, one thing that stands the test of time, and that's eternity. 
with him. Now, as Jesus pulls that out for us in this gospel text, he's also telling us a fundamental truth that happens as we look forward. And that is, as we look forward, don't lose sight of what's happening in front of you. And that's easy to do, especially when you think of the examples we talked about, right? When you're looking forward to that vacation, it's not easy to keep doing the work that you have in front of you, right? It's not easy to pay attention in school. It's not easy to keep doing the work. It's hard. Or even when it comes to shoveling more of that snow, when we look forward to the grass showing up finally, it gets harder and harder to want to shovel, right? Well, the same could be said about this eternity that we have to look forward to. It's going to be great. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But it also can distract us from what's happening in front of us. It can cause us to lose sight about what's happening right in front of us in our lives. And Jesus wants us to be able to see that. Not just looking forward, but also keeping eyes on what's happening in front of us. We see that in the text. Look to the screen. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and he healed them all." So if Jesus' only intent in this passage is to help us keep looking forward, then all we would hear is eternity here, eternity there, eternity everywhere, right? And you would think that if that was his focus, as these people were brought to him, he would just kind of keep saying, you know, keep looking forward, guys. Keep looking forward to that eternity. I know you're sick. I know you've got demons, but just keep looking forward. You know, maybe smile at them as he walked by. Maybe do the parade wave a little bit, right? just to kind of tell him to keep moving forward. But that's not what he does, is it? He stops what he's doing and he heals them. He helps them. Why? Because in that time and in that moment, those people needed exactly what you and I need each and every day of our lives. They needed the God in Christ and his power and his presence at work in their lives. That's what they needed in that time and in that moment. And it's something you and I need in this time and in this moment and even every day of our lives until that eternity. So you see, Jesus is definitely looking forward, but he's not losing sight of what's in front of him. And so it raises the question for us here this morning, what's in front of you? As you look forward to eternity, what is in front of you? Maybe the better question is, who is in front of you? There's a lot, isn't there? Especially when you consider all your friends, your family, your co-workers, uh, your friends from school, whoever it is. There's a lot of people in your life. And there's a lot of things that are happening in each life that you know, each person that you know as you go through each and every day. But you know, if you were to take all of those things, if you were to take all the things that those people experience each and every day and really boil it down to one thing, there is one term we can look at, and that is brokenness caused by sin. It's there, dear friends. And it's actually here today. It's in you. It's with you. It's in your pew. It's around you as you look around your pew. It's at your kitchen table. It's in the back seat of your car. It's at your school. It's at your kids' games. It's at work. It's everywhere in this life. And if we're constantly looking forward, if we're constantly looking forward to that eternity, we're going to miss out on opportunities to help people in this life. Not just helping them for the sake of helping them, but helping them see who is present in this life. Dear friends, that's a problem we have. We get so caught up on looking forward, even if it's only just a few minutes from now, that we miss out on those opportunities that are right there in front of us. 
We look forward to what's happening after church. We start thinking about what we're going to do after church. That we miss out on the person standing in our gathering space by themselves looking for connection. Or even we're so busy trying to figure out what's next when we get home or looking forward to what happens after supper that we miss out on our elderly neighbor shoveling seven inches of snow by themselves. Or even an important conversation that our children need to have with us. We become so consumed with looking forward as to what's next. We miss out with our kids' games and, and the things that are happening there. We miss the subtleties. Friends and family members, coworkers, teammates, other people who all of a sudden aren't wearing their wedding rings anymore because of separation and divorce. When we constantly are looking forward, we miss out on what's in front of us. Now to be clear, Jesus isn't calling us to a life of nosiness, right? Just to be clear. And he's also not calling us to a life of gossip. But what he is calling us to is a life of presence, just as he was for the people in our text and just as he still is today. And that becomes abundantly clear in our text when we look at the very beginning of our selected text. And when we do that, we see it, it might just be a throwaway phrase, right? Kind of a throwaway verse, an introduction just telling us what's going on and, and where Jesus is coming from and, and what he's doing. But it's more than that. Look to the screen. And he, being Jesus, came down with them. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty powerful introduction to this text. Because that's the truth of the matter, isn't it? That the God in Christ came down to be with them. Not just the people in the text, but with the people of this world, with you and with me. That God in Christ would be present with his people then and even now and forever into eternity. That God in Christ would come into this broken world full of sin and experience everything you and I experience. Everything people in this world would experience because of that brokenness caused by sin. Pain, loss, suffering, hunger, thirst, all of those things God in Christ experienced because he became present in this world. And what a blessing that is for us, dear friends, that we have a God in Christ who was present and still is present today. Because that means then that when we pray by ourselves or with other people or even for other people, we're not just praying to a God who doesn't understand what we're talking about. We're not praying to a God who just doesn't get what we're talking about. Instead, he knows exactly what we're talking about because he himself has gone through it. And not just knows about it, but has done something about it. It's a blessing, dear friends, because then when we come to worship with other people, we're not just worshiping a God who is far off, who is distant, who is nowhere to be seen, but actually comes into our midst here today through his word, through his gift of the sacrament to us in this place, in this time. He is present here with us to bring us his gifts. And it's a blessing, dear friends, so that when we read the scriptures by ourselves or with other people, we're not just reading words that were spoken thousands of years ago, written down by people we have no idea who they were, but actually words that mean something for us today. Words that we need to hear because God in Christ knows what we hear each and every day in this broken and sinful world. The God in Christ who knows exactly what we hear and what we need to hear. That you are forgiven. That you are loved. That you belong to him. And we are blessed, dear friends, because it means that as the brokenness in this world continues, and even when it gets to be too much in the midst of the prayers and the scripture and the worship, we then actually have something to look forward to, something that stands the test of time, something that will last forever, and that's eternity with Christ. And did you catch how he described that in the text? Look to the screen. 
And Jesus lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. So, for so their fathers did to the prophets. You know, it's kind of nice to have distractions, isn't it? It's kind of nice to have something to look forward to. Because when you think about it, what they do is they give us a break from our current reality, especially when that reality gets to be too much. When work seems like a lot, when there just seems to be a lot of snow each and every day, when life itself just gets to be too much, we have those things. We have vacations, changes of seasons, job opportunities that distract us, that tell us that life isn't always going to be this way that give us maybe even just a little bit of hope. Well, so too the words of Jesus in our text. They're a nice distraction for us, a nice reminder for us in the midst of the brokenness of this world that it's not always going to be this way, especially when it gets to be a lot, especially when it just seems to be too much in our lives. Christ has these words that remind us It's not going to be that way forever. And when that day comes, when it's no longer the way it is currently, it's not going to go back. It's not just a small change for a small time. It's a big change for all eternity. A change where there is nothing but laughter, nothing but great joy, nothing but satisfaction, completeness, wholeness, life with Christ forever. And as we wait for that day, it's my hope and prayer that as we look forward, we don't lose sight of who is in front of us. Because by bearing witness to them about Christ, by praying with them, reading scripture, bringing them to worship, we give witness as to who is with them always, who is present in their lives even today, Christ himself. And then with them, we go forward together, having something to look forward to together. May God give you the strength and the encouragement to be looking forward, but to also keep your eyes on what's ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Powerful stuff. Would you please rise? Living together in trust. And folks, that's trust for today in Christ. And hope for tomorrow in Christ. We confess our faith right now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's stay standing for prayer. Thank you, Peter. United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray for the church. Raise up faithful leaders to proclaim the gospel. Guide us in the ways of love and empower us in ministry and service. Here in a Concordia Lutheran Church in Kingsport, Tennessee, and Zion Lutheran Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. For the nations, including Haiti, grant wisdom to our elected leaders for the sake of the common good. Give courage to those who suffer persecution. Give patience and perseverance to those who work to bring an end to injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our need. For those in need, for those who do not have enough food, for those who lack money, for those who are estranged from their families, for those who worry about many things, comfort those who mourn, including those impacted by the violence in Aurora. Heal and strengthen those who are sick, especially those we name before you now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Lutheran Indian Ministries in Hawaii, restore hope to the Kanaka people in the face of severe poverty and homelessness. Grant that this ministry would be a tool to teach them of God's love for them in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Bill Johnson, adult faith formation staff and volunteers, root us deeply in your word and increase our faith that we might grow in our knowledge of you and develop hearts that are willing and eager to serve the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Nancy Severide, worship and music staff and volunteers, strengthen us through the hearing of your word and the celebration of the sacraments. Be present among us in this time of worship and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our youth attending youth quake and first communion instruction, plant your living word in these young people that they may grow strong in faith and live God-pleasing lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly, we pray for eyes that see who is in front of us as we look forward to your return. Help us to be present in this sin-filled and broken world so that Christ may be seen and proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Encourage us by their example and lead us in faith until we are united at your unending feast. Comfort and sustain all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue to worship as we engage in our offering of generosity together.
rise for prayer. Merciful God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, sharing our life he lived among us to reveal your glory and love that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Megan, the peace of the Lord be with you today. Thank you. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away, takes away the sin of the world. This is Jesus, the Christ. Our salvation today, our hope of salvation for the future. You are blessed. You are blessed to be called 
to this meal. Please be seated. rise. The true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you and lift you up body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in his peace and in his joy. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we bless you that you have brought us to the mountaintop and fed us with the life and light of your Son. Send us in his name from this place to bring light into dark corners, healing where lives are torn, and nourishment to every hungry heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Just one invitation for you this morning. We invite you to uh, remain for the 945 hour and join us right here in the sanctuary. Pastor Joe and all those who traveled with him to India uh, 
are going to report on their trip and talk about uh, their time with our partner church, the Bible Faith Lutheran Ministries to India, and share what they learned and ways they were blessed and ways they were able to pass on the blessing of Christ uh, to the folks with whom they spent time last month. So uh, join us. You can get a cup of coffee. Come back in. Just try not to spill because then it kind of runs down the you know, down the tile, but we invite you to get a cup of coffee, come back and join us for the 9.45 a.m. hour here in the sanctuary. And now, uh, looking at what uh, we see every day and looking ahead to God's uh, future hope for us, take the name of the Lord with you into your week. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path this week. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Let us pray. O Lord, give us a mind that is humble, quiet, peaceable, patient, and charitable, and a taste of your Holy Spirit in all our thoughts, words, and deeds. O Lord, give us a lively faith, a firm hope, a fervent charity, a love of you. Take from us all lukewarmness in meditation, and all dullness in prayer. Give us fervor and delight in thinking of you, your grace, and your tender compassion toward us. Give us, good Lord, the grace to work for the things for which we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God.